All right, so um, today we're gonna to be talking about the engineering design process. Um, I've got a giant mural of it up here on my wall. Um, the engineering design process is six different steps. Um, it's first, we're gonna define a problem, generate concepts, design a solution, build and test, evaluate a solution, and then present that solution. What the engineering design process is, is it's basically the process that engineers go through anytime they're gonna make something. Um, when engineers go to build or design things, we want to make sure that whatever we're designing or building is going to actually solve a problem. Now, I know a lot of times people build things just for fun. We want to build things just because like it's a cool project or something that we want to do on the side. Um, but in, we're talking like in industry, in an engineering firm, um, in real world application, an engineer is a problem solver who's going to build something that solves a problem. So, um, I want you guys in this class to learn to think like engineers, to go through this engineering design process. Um, as you start to think like engineers and solve complex problems, uh, then you can get an idea for whether or not you might like to do engineering someday. And remember the whole point of all this, this class, is for you to figure out what you're interested in. What do you like? Do you like engineering? Are you more into business and marketing? Uh, what are you about? What makes you excited? So. Um, as we go through this, if this type of thinking excites you, if the projects we're doing excites you, then, um, then you're on a good track. And that means in, in future years, you might want to continue to take engineering classes. If not, if this isn't your jam, that's also good news. You want to go a different direction. So first things first, um, I'm going to talk through the six engineering design process steps in the context of our paper tower assignment, which is the next assignment that we're going to do. And then we're also gonna talk about how real world engineers would use the process as well. So the first step is define the problem. So if I were you taking notes on this, I would probably make a header that says define the problem and then we'll take some notes underneath that. So step one, define a problem. Okay, defining the problem means, um, basically we're, we're, we're trying to get a, a solid idea of what the problem is that we're trying to solve. Um, for example, paper tower assignment, um, I'm going to be giving you guys two pieces of paper, a foot and a half of tape, and I'll give you three class periods, and you have to build the tallest freestanding tower that you can during that time. So if I were going to try and define that problem that I just gave you in one sentence, I would probably say, um, define the problem. I would probably say, um... Okay, I've got to build the tallest tower possible. I think that's probably the simplest way to define the problem. You guys are going to build the tallest tower possible. Um, but just saying that I'm going to build the tallest tower possible doesn't really fully explain what we're doing. Because if I just say, hey guys, you have three days to build the tallest tower possible out in the shop, some of you are really smart. A lot of you are really smart. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded wrong. Some of you are smart. No, you're all really smart, and a lot of you would think. Uh, let's go in the back room, grab some of those big metal beams and just build a giant metal tower. We can make it 50 feet tall, it'll be great. Um, and that would technically work, right? Because all I said was build the tallest tower possible. But in the real world, there are always gonna be some constraints or limitations on what you can actually do. So the next thing you have to do after you define your problem is you then have to figure out what are your limitations or your constraints. I'm gonna call them constraints. So figure out what your constraints are. These are your limitations. Okay, um, in my class, your constraints are mainly gonna be time. You've got a certain amount of time. It's gonna be supplies that I give you. And then there are gonna be specific rules for each project. As a real world engineer, um, some of the constraints that you might face would be, first and foremost, money. Money's huge. Um, certain engineering firm on a certain project, you're going to have a limited budget. Um, let's say you're working on the iPhone design team for Apple um, and you want to build next year's model. I mean, if you had a million dollars and people could buy a phone for a million dollars, I bet there's a lot that they could do. But the average customer is not going to pay a million dollars for a phone, so you have to create the best tech possible that would be affordable to a customer within a five to five hundred dollar to one thousand dollar range or something. So, money is huge. The next big one is time. In the real world, time is huge. Um, again, like with the iPhone, if you think about it, there's a new phone that comes out every year. 
or a couple new phones, right? Um, so when they start out as a team in the fall to create a new model, they know that they have a limited amount of time to get this figured out so that they can then manufacture it so they can be selling it by the next year. Um, if they had 10 years to develop a phone, I'm sure they could come up with something incredible, but 10 years is a long time. So time is huge. Um, some other ones, material types. Um, I won't go too into detail on these. So there's certain materials that you could have as a constraint. There's size is a constraint. Think about like with the iPhone. Um, if we didn't have a size constraint and we could just make an enormous device, well, you could basically just build a supercomputer that people would have to lug around on like a tractor and use that as their phone. And I'm sure it could do all sorts of amazing stuff, but this thing has to fit in your pocket and be really lightweight. So size is a really important constraint in engineering. Um, and size is, is one of the biggest limiting factors, especially in technology. We want to keep things small, but they also need to have all these functions. So uh, this will also be one that you guys will have to be aware of in my class. You'll have size restrictions on certain projects. Okay, so these are some of the main ones. There's a lot of other constraints that you might face specific in, in an engineering setting, but these are the big ones. Okay, next step, generate concepts. Um, this is like a fancy new term for brainstorming. And most students have heard of brainstorming before. The big thing here is that brainstorming, it's not like a brain shower, it's not a brain sprinkle, it's a brainstorm. Like the idea is that you just come up with any and all ideas that come to mind. Um, with brainstorming, um, especially when you're working as a team, you don't want to push out any ideas. The whole point of brainstorming is to get every idea on paper, no matter how dumb it might seem at the time. And what's kind of cool that you'll find is as you guys brainstorm as a team, some of your best ideas might come from little bits and pieces of other crappy ideas. Um, for example, like we're gonna build a paper tower. So let's say, um, okay, we got two pieces of paper, foot and a half of tape, we gotta get as tall as possible. Maybe one student thinks, well, why don't we just build a bunch of little boxes and then stack those on top of each other and go as tall as we can. Um, and then another student thinks, okay, well, I, th I think it'd be easier if we just roll um, the paper up and then stack that as tall as we can get it to go. And then the other student is like, well, guys, I think we could just fold the paper in half and stand it up on the table that way and then just continue to like tape more pieces on top and go up like that. So you've got three pretty different ideas and they're all gonna have like pros and cons. Maybe, and I'm making this up by the way, I'm not saying what I'm about to say is not like necessarily a good idea, but maybe um, a combination of these three could end up being a better solution. So for instance, maybe we think this folded up idea might work really good for a base, but we really like this um, wrapped idea to make like the shaft part of the tower. And we decided that the box is probably gonna take up too much paper and not be very tall. So maybe we, we will, not use those on this one. So if we do like a combination, then maybe we um, we use the folded up paper thing as the base, and then going up from there, we do the cylinders. I'm making this up. It doesn't, yeah. I don't know that that's necessarily a good idea. But in my own experience on projects that I've worked on, sometimes my best ideas have come from combinations of really bad ideas. Um, so don't don't like let yourself say no to an idea when you're brainstorming. You want every idea on paper. Okay, um, the other thing with brainstorming, when you guys do that in the shop, in class, I wanna see not only sketches of your ideas, but I wanna see little notes. Um, so just even single words, something to kinda help paint a clear picture so that I, as a teacher, can look at it and know what you're talking about. As a real engineer, this would be important to communicate your ideas effectively. You're gonna wanna use pictures to be able to hand draw your ideas quickly and also label those ideas. So, um, you know, maybe I would say, hey, well, we're gonna have tape here, and draw an arrow. Some like simple label like this could be really helpful. And then maybe here we say, we're gonna go up 40 inches or something. Basically just add as much information as you can. Little tags, little labels, writing and pictures together to paint a good idea, a good picture. I'm not looking for like a, a fine art sketch. Like you don't have to make this an art project. It can be done really quickly, but you can still communicate effectively doing a quick job. Okay, next, uh, design a solution is step three. Okay, 
Um, when we're talking about design in engineering, we're talking about, we're still talking about the art aspect of engineering, if you want to call it that. Um, basically, design does not mean make it with your hands at this point. At this point, we are using 3D design software to build a 3D model. Um, at this point, we're doing a really nice sketch on paper to show what we're going to do. Um, most engineers today are doing everything on the computer, so we'd be doing probably CAD modeling. Um, if you're doing construction, then we'd be using uh, Revit or some other type of engineering um, design product. So design a solution. This is like, we're, we're still designing it digitally. It doesn't exist in the real world, real world yet. Um, but we want to basically pick our best idea from brainstorming, and now we're going to make a really detailed drawing or model of it. In this class, we are actually gonna skip over this phase pretty quick and not really cover it. Um, in uh, Gateway is where you guys do a lot more of the design and modeling part. Um, yeah? Do you have ponytails or anything by chance? Ponytails? What is a ponytail? Like hair? Oh, um, like a rubber band. rubber band. Yeah, no, I'm out of rubber bands, sorry. Okay, um, Okay. so design, design a solution, you guys are gonna do a lot in the gateway class. Um, if you guys decided to take that or any of the gateway classes, you spend a lot more time designing on the computer. This class, design a solution, is gonna be a really quick step. You're basically just saying, I like this one, and then you just move on. That's, that's how you design. It's, our projects are really simple in this class, so it's not really worth our time to design. Um, it's better to just say, I'm gonna go with this idea and then begin the next step, build and test. So step four, this is the fun one. Um, oh, sorry, for design a solution, your notes should say something about 3D design um, or like using a computer. Okay, step four, build and test. This is where we make it in real life. I'm struggling to write today for some reason. Okay, build and test. Okay, this is the fun part. Um, this is the step that most students want to jump to. If I don't like force you to slow down and do the first three steps, most students, they're like, cool. I know what my project is. I want to go just grab my paper. I want to just start building right away. Um, on certain projects that can work if it's a really simple project. But I promise you, if you will take the time to go through the first three steps, think this out, plan it out, and then begin to build, then you're gonna end up with a lot better product. Case in point, our number one record holder as of when I'm making this video, Bridger White and Kyler Morris, um, they had a 97 inch tower and it was the only tower they built during the entire three days. They spent the first day and a half just thinking and planning and researching online. And then the last day and a half, they started building really quickly the, the design solution that they thought would be the best one and it totally was the best one. So. Um, it's worth your time to think things through and then move into the build and test phase. So during build and test, you're just making the thing. You're gonna make it, you're gonna have fun, and uh, for most engineers, this is the exciting part because then you end up with something you can touch, feel, and experience. Step five, evaluate solution. Um, this is the step where we're trying to figure out does our product that we just made, does it actually solve the problem? Is it going to solve the problem that we set out to solve? So in the context of the paper tower assignment, um, the problem that you're trying to solve realistically is I need to build the tower as tall as possible so I can get a good grade in Mr. Lanham's class. Like that's really the real life problem that you're trying to solve um, for this project. So you'll get two pieces of paper, you'll get your foot and have a tape, you'll build a tower. Um, you'll go through all these steps. When you get to evaluate solution, you're gonna ask yourself, okay, does my tower actually work? Did I get up to 40 inches? Okay, if it does go to 40 inches, what could I do to improve it and make it go even taller? What could I do next time to build a better tower, basically? So you're gonna be asking questions that help you figure out how you could improve or how you could just meet your minimum standard. So evaluate solution, we're basically gonna ask the questions. And the big question is, does it work?
Okay, the last step is called present solution. I don't have a lot to say about present solution for you guys. Um, you're not gonna be presenting your solutions in my class um, because we only have a quarter together. We don't have a lot of time. Um, my other engineering classes do. Every time they build a project, they have a few minutes where they get up in front of the class and they talk through what they've done, how they accomplished it, what the issues were, how they solved those issues. Um, and they'll just kind of talk through that process. As a real life engineer, um, you're gonna have a client, someone who's paying you money to make them something or solve some problem. And after you've created a product for them, you have to get up in front of them and be like, hey, you gave me all this money, you gave me this time, you wanted this product, here's what I did with your money and your time, here's how I accomplished the goal. Um, so presenting is basically coming back to the beginning and saying, here's what we did. Now this process, the engineering design process, is supposed to be iterative, which means it's supposed to repeat itself again and again and again. If you guys look up at the wall, you'll notice I um, put arrows on there that go in a circle. The idea here is this process is not a one-time thing. Um, this process is, is meant to be repeated over and over again. Each time you go through the process, you, you're going to improve and improve and improve and improve. I think one good example is the iPhone. So, what well, I don't remember, was it 10, 10 years ago? Yeah, it must have been close to 10 years ago now, the first iPhone came out. I still remember, I believe I was in junior high, almost high school when the very first iPhone came out. And they could have at that point just been like, look, we made the first touch phone, it can get on the internet. Like, I don't know, was it the first touch phone? Anyway, we made this awesome phone and it gets on the internet and it's beautiful. Um, we're done, everyone go home and live the rest of your lives. And like, that sounds really silly, but people don't do that. Like we, we wanna improve and we wanna make things better. So after that first phone comes out, they all get together and they start over again and they start defining new problems. Okay, well we have this phone, but you know, it doesn't connect to the internet that fast. And it's a little bit slow in terms of um, processing power. And there's other things that we could probably improve on. So they define new problems and then they set about fixing those and they go and they go and they go. And year by year, we end up with better and better models until, um, now we're at the point, I guess 12 is about to come out as of this video. Anyway, I'm not like a super big iPhone fan. I don't know, it's just an easy one to talk about. So that is called iteration. And that's when engineers continue to go through the engineering design process again and again and again. Um, always improving each time we go through. For you guys in this class, you will receive materials and a bunch of time and you'll have an objective that you have to fulfill, like with paper towers. But you can build as many towers as you have time for. So one strategy, I know Bridger and Kyler over on the leaderboard, they got 97 inches and they only built one tower. It's possible for you to plan this out, build a tower really quick, tear that tower down, get new supplies, more tape, try again, tear that down, try again. You can try again as many times as you have time for. Um, that's totally fine with me. Um, and keep doing that process until you figure out what works. So I expect you all to fail, at least temporarily, until you succeed in your later versions. Okay, so that is basically the engineering design process, seventh grade edition. Um, for the assignment, make sure that you have taken thorough notes on all the categories, uh, preferably on a Google Doc. Upload your notes to Canvas under the engineering design process assignment um, for full credit. And I'm going to edit this video later.